Today we will be reviewing the Dell Inspiron 5567. Welcome to Laptop Media. The laptop packs the new Intel 7th generation Kaby Lake processor and an AMD Radeon R7 M454 GPU. Interestingly, even the low-end configurations can be found with an IPS panel. But all of this later in our review. Let us start with the design. The lid features a glossy plastic finish while the bottom piece is made of the usual black, slightly rough plastic offering just a small vent opening in the middle for extra airflow. Quite surprisingly, the interior successfully mimics a brushed aluminum surface. It is pleasant to touch, doesn't attract fingerprints and offers a fair amount of stability. We also have a big touchpad area with clicky and responsive mouse buttons. Overall, the touchpad experience is really good with the small exception of the slight wobbling that we noticed. The keyboard, on the other hand, was accepted with some mixed feelings. The keys might be a bit too small for the taste of some users, which is compensated with some spacing between them. We got used to typing on it quite fast and we especially like the clicky tactile feedback with a reasonable amount of key travel. The notebook uses a Full HD IPS panel. Viewing angles are excellent. We've recorded a decent maximum brightness on the panel of 280 nits, while the color temperature is really close to the optimal 6500K. The display covers about 58% of the sRGB color gamut, suggesting that the used IPS panel here is budget friendly. We develop unique profiles tailored for each individual laptop and we'll show you just how easy they could be purchased and used to enhance your viewing ability. We recommend you the profile so you'd have a better usage of your laptop. Firstly, for working with Photoshop, CorelDRAW or just overall usage of the laptop, we'd recommend the Office Work Web Design Profile that will maximize the Inspiron 5567's color accuracy. You can see main and additional colors inside the sRGB gamut pre and post calibration. The Office Work Web Design Profile has been created with a target color temperature equal to 6500K, 140 nits luminance and a gamma set to 2.2. We tested the accuracy of the display with 24 commonly used colors. You can check out the results at factory condition and also with the Office Work Web Design Profile. The next figure shows how well the display is able to reproduce really dark parts of an image, which is essential when watching movies or playing games in low ambient light. The left side of the image represents the display with stock settings while the right one is with our gaming and movie nights profile, which upon activation will make your gaming experience better. More information about the display profiles can be found in the description below. You can easily check for yourself how your display handles the darkest nuances. One of the most important things for proper gamers in a machine is the screen's response time. We record the fall time plus rise time of 31.9 milliseconds. We were surprised to see that the panel doesn't emit pulsating light and thus PWM isn't used for regulating screen brightness. It can be used for long periods of time without causing unwanted eye strain. However, you can always use our health guard profile that will completely eliminate the screen flickering and will also reduce the harmful blue light emissions while keeping the colors of the screen perceptually accurate. If you are not familiar with the harm from blue light emissions, you can learn more about it in our specialized article that I will link in the top right corner of this video. The other two profiles will improve visibility while gaming or watching movies and enhance color accuracy. Again, the purchase link of all of our profiles can be found in the description of this video. The battery unit is rated at 42 watt hours, which is present in all configurations. For average use and web browsing, it withstood for around 7 hours and 35 minutes, and the gaming battery test provided around 2 hours and 16 minutes of playtime. Since this is a low end to mid range laptop, we don't expect anything more than a 2.5 inch drive slot, and that's what we get here. The unit that we received sported a Toshiba 1TB hard drive. We were pleasantly surprised by the two RAM slots that the motherboard offers. Our unit came with a single SK Hynix 16GB DDR4 chip and the other slot remains free for upgrade. An SSD slot was not present but you can always change your optic device. The Core i7-7500U processor is part of the latest Intel Cable Lake generation of CPUs which is bringing much higher clock rates. Now the chip is clocked at 2.7 to 3.5 GHz. We compare the Inspiron 5567 with other notebooks with the same CPU. You can check the full review and more information about this CPU in the Laptop Media website. 
AMD's Radeon R7M445 is aimed for the entry-level notebooks and can be used for general multimedia and light gaming. The GPU is based on the mezzo core on the 28nm node, but unlike the higher-end R7M460, the M445 shaders are limited to 320, with a maximum of 384. Along with the 320 shaders, the GPU offers 8 ROPs and 20 TMUs. The GPU itself operates at relatively low frequencies from 780 to 960 MHz. The memory setup consists of 2 or 4 GB of GDDR5 memory clocked at 1000 MHz and it's connected to the graphics processor using a 64-bit interface. All of this makes up for a performance identical to the refreshed NVIDIA GeForce 940MX GPU but the variant with DDR3 memory. The extreme nature of the stress test that we perform isn't a good representation of the real-life use, but at the same time, it's the best way to determine the cooling capabilities and the stability of the system in the long run. We were quite surprised by the effectiveness of the cooling system when it comes to the CPU. The Core i7-7500U reached fairly low temperatures under full load and was able to utilize the maximum clock speed of 3.1 GHz for a while before dropping down to 2.9 GHz. This is how Turbo Boost works on the new KB Lake Pro processors. On top of that we could barely hear the system running. The cooling fans weren't spinning fast and thus almost no noise was emitted. But after running the GPU stress test things changed rapidly. The GPU wasn't able to keep up at times. At first it kept its maximum operating frequency of 920 MHz and eventually went down to 780 MHz while reaching temperatures as high as 86 degrees Celsius. We suspect that not the cooling system is the problem here, but probably the GPU being the culprit. Still, such workloads are not normal for this kind of laptop and the general user shouldn't worry about thermal throttling or overheating. Despite the high inner temperatures, the surface around the keyboard remained fairly cool, with the only warm spots around the center of the keyboard and the upper part of the interior near the hinge. The Inspiron 5567 from Dell is probably one of the most balanced mid-range solutions currently on the market. It offers good build quality, excellent touchpad experience and a comfortable keyboard for typing, although the keys appear to be a bit small and will take some time getting used to. The highlight of the product is probably the IPS panel, although be careful when choosing your configuration because there are variants with TN HD panels as well. The lower price configuration of the notebook make it a direct competitor of the Lenovo IdeaPad 5. 10, so it's hard for us to recommend one over the other. Both laptops have absolutely identical performance even though AMD solution sports GDDR5 memory and offers similar picture quality. However, the absence of PWM and a better battery life helps the Inspiron 5567 take the lead in this one. Thank you for watching Laptop Media. We have many more reviews waiting for you in our channel. Also consider subscribing so you always be up to date with the latest laptops, desktops, VR technologies, phones and everything our technological future will provide us. For more extensive information about this model and many more, visit laptopmedia.com.